In today's video, we're going to be doing one simple thing, and that's looking at the internal affairs of the new TaylorMade P790. And we'll be asking the question just how much better did the new TaylorMade P790 just get? And I'll be answering those questions both on the fairways and with some dry ball data from Trackman to back up my findings. And today, I'll be introducing a brand new review style format to the channel where I'll be rating these clubs in a number of different criteria, and I'll also be using my own optimal performance stats in terms of trackman to consider how this thing does in terms of overall performance The question is, will the TaylorMade P790 be the first club in this review format to tick all of the boxes? But let's start off by looking what is new in the 2023 model of those P790s. And quite simply, each iron has been individually crafted on the inside. Each iron is weight specifically placed to optimize maximum performance goals. And tungsten weighting is also utilized to achieve different CG in each individual iron. This is something that Taylor made a call in flighted CG. And if you take a look at these images, you can see the internal structure of each of the irons is very much different and unique and you'll also notice a new sound stabilization bar which should improve both the sound and feel which we will determine later so that's the tech claims out the way but what else is different about the new p790s well there is a change in their looks but i would say it's only a bit of a tweak but in my opinion quite an important tweak because what they've done is they've streamlined them with their p770 so now it's much easier to get much more of an aligned bag in terms of the looks category p770s p790s now becomes a perfect option to blend now these irons are available from three to a wedge that's 19 degrees through to 50 degrees and that to me gives you plenty of options in terms of blending sets with those p770s like i mentioned and then of course there's a price point which will always be a contentious issue on screen for you now is uh, the price point at retail from our partner at hot golf and they're ready for pre-order right now now i don't know the price right now you're getting a little bit of a heads up on me my guess would be they're in around 1200 pound a set and what that is going to mean is yes they're in another expensive set of irons but in terms of the category they fall in what they're competing against it is very much in that same sort of ballpark so like it or not that unfortunately is where these things are going to be pitched in at now whether you decide you want to pay that kind of money that is of course up to you so the question is what are my first thoughts in terms of on course and uh, well i've played a few shots around here today at betters Coyed, and what you'll see is that the performance so far has been pretty good but i'll uh, i'll reserve judgment on that because the first thing i'm going to look at is from a visual perspective do these tick a box Well, the simple answer is yes, they do tick a box because quite simply what TaylorMade have done with P790 and P770s for that matter is produce a very clean looking iron, very minimal markings. It sort of switches really between a little bit of shiny chrome and a little bit of that sort of matte finish that we've seen. And either way, it just got a hell of a lot of shelf appeal. So we're going to drag on this one. You draw your own opinions, it's a very subjective matter, but for me, it's a first tick in a box for the P790 in terms of the way these things look. Has that got it? Oh, just a tad short. The next criteria we look at is sound and fear, and it's a really key one for me in terms of P790, but in terms of hollow bodied irons full stop, because in all honesty, I've always had issue with them because they can be a little bit clicky. Now we've got a sound stabilization bar positioned very differently in each one of these irons in the new P790s. The question is, did it work? Well, I would say yes to a degree. It's definitely moved on. It's definitely enhanced the sound and feel, but it's still not what I would call 
pure in any way it's still very much a hollow bodied iron and i don't know whether they're ever going to overcome that criteria to make sure that i give it my full sort of love if you like there's a forged face but that's where it ends in terms of that forged feel and like i said very very good but by no means perfect so unfortunately i'm going to mark this as a cross and a bit of a negative in terms of that sound and feel department but once again each to their own very much a subjective opinion now next up is on course performance the all important bit in terms of performance in my opinion because whilst dry ball data is key to understanding certain parameters and criteria what happens out here on the course is all important before i hit this seven i just want to talk about an element of looks not about how shiny these things are but in terms of profile i think they've done a good job again so they've kept that top line in kind of uh, an acceptable levels but the overall shaping uh, and profile is really really good you know and very much minimal offset as well so i thought i would mention that i love what they've done in terms of the design and looks elements but anyway back to on course performance let's try this seven iron into the backdrop Now, once again, a real interesting ball flight. Are they different ball flights with each iron? Well, the predominant thing I have noticed with each of them is that one criteria remains the same. And that consistency has been ball flight and just how high each of these irons has launched. Now I've got five, seven and nine iron and the one thing that is really, really noticeable is that high launching ball that is still moving forward. It's not high spinning. And like I said, we'll look at some Trackman data that sort of backs that up a little bit later on. But in terms of on course performance, these are very workable irons in a better player's hands, but they're also um, plenty of confidence everything you'd look for in terms of when you're on the course i think you can only do one thing and that's give them a tick in terms of another box ticked in terms of p790s on course performance Well, that's testament to that ball flight comment. It's just ridiculous. That's a nine iron. I'm going to talk about forgiveness with a nine iron in hand. Well, not really, but if we go back to some sort of five irons or longer irons and maybe that mid iron a seven, I can't really comment massively on the fact that every ball has been hit fairly decent out the middle of the club face. So to, for me to look at what forgiveness actually is, well, it's very much off those bottom grooves and off centre hits. I'm going to pass this judgment based on what I found inside in terms of dry ball data and P790s are an incredibly forgiving iron. I think anyone who's tried them can pretty much vouch for that. So we're going to give them another tick in the box in terms of that forgiveness element, but not based on their on-course performance, but maybe on overall dry ball data and my previous experience of these P790s. So yeah, we'll give them a tick in that box. So that final piece of criteria was dry ball data, which I collected a few days back at uh, Carden Park and we use Trackman and um, what you'll see for the first time is a lot of people are asking that we've got some barometer in terms of my performance in terms of the best irons that i've tried in terms of optimal performance those numbers you're seeing on screen now are my optimal performance and the key parameters that i really pay attention to what you're going to see on screen for you now is how the p790 performed in my hands by comparison this category is a seven iron in that sort of stronger lofted 30 to 31 degrees it's pretty common in around that a lot of irons will fall into this category and what you'll see is that the p790 performed incredibly well Swing speed was a little bit down on the day and therefore distance was relative, just a little bit down on terms of my optimal numbers, but that's based on obviously a club head speed. The spin number was very impressive because again, if you watch the channel, uh, frequently and over the years you'll know i don't achieve great spin numbers with my irons on the low side and that 6000 rpm is probably being a uh, well it's punching definitely but 
A 7 iron that's producing 5,500 revs is certainly passable in my opinion and it's passable because of the other criteria and that's that launch angle and descent angle to follow which again it does incredibly well. It launched the ball really really high in terms of any iron that I tested but not in a way that like I said was too spinny and it doesn't move forward at the same time more so in a way that will help most golfers in trying to achieve what they want to do which was uh, get some launch which will in theory with the right kind of spin numbers improve your carry distance and overall performance so in terms of dry ball data would it tick a box i would say absolutely yes as it ticked all the boxes i'm afraid not p790 fell down in just one element and it's the bit that it always will probably struggle with in terms of these reviews because sound and feel and hollow bodied irons may always have an issue in my eyes or in my opinion but that's that subjective one so four out of five in terms of those boxes ticked a really good performer taylor made have done really well with p790 it's always a big big seller and it will continue to be so this year in my opinion if that's the kind of thing that you're looking at right now then p790s have got to be in the mix and don't forget to check out our partner at hot golf if you are considering doing so right that's me done thanks as ever let me know what you think of our new review format if it needs tweaking in any way then stick those comments down below and i'll only be too happy to oblige if i think it is relevant to do so right Thanks as ever for watching. I'll see you all soon.